Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, got an important video I want to make today and I've actually been uh, holding off on making this video because I've been kind of thinking about what I want to say. Um, I got a comment a while ago now. Gosh, it's, it's got to be a couple of months ago, honestly. And I told the I told the guy I would make a video on this topic and so here I am today. Now, back, uh, I think it was June 4th of this past year, um, as some of you guys know, I competed in the uh, Whiteface Mountain Uphill Bike Race. Um, basically what that is, is it is a 11-mile um, race from the uh, Whiteface Mountain Ski Lodge in Wilmington, New York. And the first three miles are basically a downhill portion uh, down to the Whiteface Mountain Memorial, uh, Veterans Memorial Highway. And from there, it's an 8-mile climb up to the summit of Whiteface Mountain and of course I posted my ride on Strava you know after the ride and I had I had a really good day I had a good race I finished uh seventh out of like almost 300 riders um put up by far my best time ever up the mountain I think my actual time on Strava for that segment for that uh, actual eight mile segment not counting the three miles you know down to the mountain but just counting the mountain the eight miles up the mountain i think my time was like 47 42 or something like that and um i haven't checked it really since but at the time it was the 12th fastest uh recorded time on strava up white base mountain um out of like 2000 plus uh you know, times on Strava. So I had a really good ride, felt good, uh, pushed really good power numbers, and felt as as good as I ever have on the bike. And a guy that follows my, you know, follows the channel here, and obviously follows me on Strava, uh, noticed something. Um, and actually, he's the only person that really ever. Uh, well, actually, a, a buddy of mine did, but of course, you know, I I chat with him a lot, and he knows the deal. But. Um, that guy commented on my on one of the videos I made about that race, and he said, "Hey, you know, basically his comment was, "Hey, I thought you were, you know, a big into the spin to win mentality. I see your average cadence on your recent white base effort was pretty low. What's the deal?" And yeah, that was a really good observation by the guy. And you know, as many of you, as many of you guys know. Um, I've promoted the spin to win mentality here on the channel uh, more than a few times. And it's a mentality that I still use in my writing. But, you know, I won't lie to you, on that white face, on that ride, on that on that ride up white face where I held an average power of 316 for, like I said, the 4742, uh, which put me for my body weight like right around basically five and a half watts per kilogram up that mountain. So that was a pretty good day. And my average cadence, I think it was 77 um, up the climb. And that's because I did like the last four plus miles of the climb out of the saddle, exclusively out of the saddle. And I was, you know, obviously when you're riding out of the saddle, your cadence dips a little bit, lo a little bit lower. And Basically, what I want to say in this video is, you know, I used to think that you had to spin a really high cadence, that basically it would be more efficient and at the end of the day, quicker for you to spin a higher cadence all of the time. And I won't lie to you, I no longer feel that way. Um, do I still think it's important to spin to win or, you know, ride with a really high cadence in the hills? Certainly, at certain points, and this is and this is where the uh, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. In the first three miles of the white face race, um, at about the three mile mark, is when you get to the uh, there's a toll gate. There's basically a a gate with a toll station where you have to pay to drive up to the summit of White Face Mountain, and that's at about the three mile mark from Wilmington. And there's so you know so, somewhere around there, and up until that's the point. Okay, that's the point in the race where I where I was where I was no longer able to hold the pace of the 
main elite riders on that day. I think there was like, well, I was the last, I was the first, I was the last guy to get, or the first guy basically to get popped off that group of eight. So there was eight of us, uh, or seven of us, because I finished seventh. So there was seven of us in a very tight group the first three miles up, up the white face climb. And we had some legitimate professional riders in there. One guy I know was a professional mountain bike racer. And I know a couple other guys are cat ones, you know, cat one riders. And, you know, there's some, there were some really fast guys in that race. And I was with them for the first three miles. And in that time frame, in the first three miles, I was using mostly a in the saddle, high, you know, high, you know, basically spin to win mentality because I was forced to, I was forced to try to hold accelerations. And what I've found pretty much, what I've been really kind of discovering pretty much this year since I've been, uh, since I've started outdoor riding again, is that when I'm, when I'm in a situation where I have to respond to other people, where I cannot dictate the pace and I have to hold a faster wheel in front of me, in that situation, it's I feel better to be in the saddle and spinning a very high leg speed. I just feel it's easier to close down, to basically close the gap, to close the gap and hold the wheel. It's just it's easier to do that when you're spinning high cadence, when you're really being pushed above your your limits. I still think spinning to win is the way to go in that scenario. But what happened is once I you know kind of got shelled off that you know front you know, seven guy pack and kind of had to settle into my own rhythm. At that point, I shifted down to a couple of harder gears and I got out of the saddle. And what I have been, what I've been finding this year is that I can simply hold my, I have more than one FTP. I have an in the saddle FTP and I have an out of the saddle FTP. And my out of the saddle climbing Functional threshold power is simply higher than it is in the saddle. I mean, that's for me, it's unequivocal fact. It's it's what I've seen day in and day out uh, in my riding. If I ride out of the saddle, I can simply hold more power than I can in the saddle because I'm using different muscle groups. I'm using those big glute muscles and those hamstring muscles when I'm out of the saddle. So long story short, I basically, once I kind of had to settle into my own rhythm, I shifted down to a couple harder gears and I was out of the saddle climbing exclusively the last four miles. Never sat in the saddle one time. Rolled the whole way out of the saddle, which of course put me into a lower cadence, which decreased my overall cadence. I would say actually in the first three miles, my average cadence would have probably been 90 plus because I was in the saddle spinning a lot to try to hang on to those guys. And then so my actually my out of the saddle cadence because I was keeping an eye on it in the, in the race. I was down into the 60s, honestly. I was I was climbing that hill the last four miles in the 60s for cadence. But I was out of the saddle, and I had a maintainable pace going. And uh, so that's what I've been discovering. So I think it's important to spin to win. But I have to say, I also think, it, I th- basically, I think it's important that you have a good a good overall spectrum of what you can do. Because there's certain situations where I think it's it's quicker and more efficient to be in the saddle spinning. And conversely, I, I now think there's situations, which for me is pretty much if I'm into my own kind of threshold effort, where I'm simply more efficient and I'm simply faster out of the saddle at a lower cadence. Um, I pretty much first discovered this this spring when I was... Uh, down in in uh, in North Carolina, doing the doing the assault on the Carolinas uh, ride. I did that in April, and of course, as you guys know, I trained hard all winter. See, before, like before, basically last year, I basically last year I when I started back racing again, I had taken like a three year a, a three year break off the bike. Last year, spring of 2016. I started riding and started racing again after a three-year break off the bike. So I was coming into 2016 basically pretty unfit, okay? I didn't have a very high level of fitness, you know, compared to what I do now. And so last year, honestly, because my FTP was so much lower last year, I pretty much had to spin to win in order to, 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 to do well in the hills because I didn't have the threshold power to push the bigger gear. I simply didn't have it within my capabilities. 
But what I discovered this year, after training all last spring, all last summer, and keeping the training going all winter, did the trainer road programs all winter, worked my tail off all winter trying to get good and, and trying to improve. So I came into spring of 2017 a lot fitter than I was in 2016. And what I pretty much started discovering right off in the early spring is that I could simply push bigger gears than I could ever push before. I had the strength in the FTP to do it. Um, like on that uh, Assault on the Carolinas ride, you know, we started out, I mean, we started out towards the end of the pack. And again, we were just out on a training ride. And of course, there was hundreds of people in front of me. And so I kind of always had a, you know, a carrot to chase. You know, the whole ride, I just kept picking people off, picking people off, picking people off. And what I found was that in that ride, like, I wasn't having any trouble pretty much riding the big ring out of the saddle. Like, I could just kind of ride, I could just kind of just keep riding out of the saddle, pushing big gear, going pretty fast, catching guys like crazy. And I was like, Geez, you know, I couldn't do that. I mean, I remember I remember that day in that Assault in the Carolinas ride thinking to myself, I couldn't do this last year. Last year, I would have been, you know, in the small ring, you know, spinning a much higher cadence at this point, trying to go fast, whereas now I'm in the big ring, and I'm out of the saddle, and I'm going pretty fast, and I'm really not struggling, you know, and I that's where I really kind of first realized this, and of course, I've been continuing this this style, you know, throughout the spring and, and summer here. And pretty much, again, guys, what I found is consistently day in and day out this year, now that I have a higher FTP, I mean, I would actually, I would honestly have to estimate my out-of-the-saddle climbing FTP right around 315 to 320 watts because that's what I held for 47 plus minutes up White Face Mountain. I held 316 watts for over 47 minutes. I, that's my FTP out of the saddle, I would have to say. Last year, there's no way I could have rode 317 watts for that long. There's no way on earth I could have did it. I mean, like I said, I tested last November after a spring and summer of racing. I tested last November at 224, my first time on Trainer Road for my FTP test. Now, 224 watts... I mean, I'm not going to say it seems easy, but I can I can ride 224 watts. I can average watts for a four-hour ride now. So I'm just a lot stronger. And what I found is that I'm simply faster if I ride out of the saddle, okay? If I'm at my own kind of tempo pace. But what I get, again, what I found is if I'm in the saddle or if I'm if I'm if I'm really in a really fast race and or in a really fast segment of a race where I'm being pushed kind of above my limits by other guys where I have to react to what to the pace they're dishing out, I think it's better to be in the saddle. So pretty much what my current stance is on the whole spin to win or, you know, grinding debate is I think you have to be good at I think it's I think it's best to work on both. And I think it's best to be efficient at both. And I don't really so much consider it grinding if you're at a pace that you can sustain. To me, grinding is when you're, you know, in that last couple hundred meters of a steep hill and your cadence is in the 60s and it's not a sustainable effort, but you're just trying to basically grind your way to the to the finish or to the top of the hill, where if that hill continued another few minutes, you'd be falling off on the side of the road because you couldn't sustain the output. I feel as long as you can sustain the cadence, rather it's 100, rather it's 60, rather it's 20. If it's a cadence you can sustain for a prolonged period of time and you're not at danger of, of blowing up, then it's not grinding. It, you're still being efficient at that point. So I was efficiently climbing in the mid to upper 60s on White Face Mountain out of the saddle. I was climbing efficiently. I mean, I was in no danger of blowing up and not being able to, to continue pedaling. I was at my upper, I mean, I was, trust me, I was at my threshold, okay, but I, but I was at a sustainable pace. I could, I could have been, I honestly, I could have ridden White Face Mountain again at the same pace. I feel like I could have ridden the mountain again at that same pace. I had a very strong kick at the summit of White Face. I was not, you know, grinding to the point where I was going to, you know, risk basically blowing up. To me, that's grinding. If you're 
out of the saddle, or even if you're in the saddle, if, if you're pushing a cadence and you can sustain that for a prolonged period of time, I don't really personally consider that to be grinding, regardless of what the cadence actually is. So, I know I've been kind of rambling on here, guys, um, but I just kind of wanted to share this video with you, um, kind of give you my updated stance. Like I said, uh, you know, I'll admit if I, you know, change my mind or if I find something that works a little bit better for me, I have found that I'm faster. Um, again, when I'm kind of able to set my own pace, I'm faster out of the saddle climbing. I can just hold more power for longer um, if I'm out of the saddle. But again, when I'm when I'm forced to react to other guys, you know, paces and other guys, you know, uh, reactions, I find it easier to close it down in the saddle spinning. When you have a lot more variability within your cadence, when you can go from 110 to 90 and back and forth on demand, I think it's better to be in the saddle spinning a high cadence if you're being forced to kind of hang on to guys that are really pushing you. I like to be in the saddle if I'm kind of on my own or if I'm the strongest guy in the race, set in pace, like at the Syracuse uh, uh, at, the, at the Syracuse hill climb race that I won uh a few weeks ago, I was I was the strongest climber in that in that race. I knew it pretty early on, and I was what I was doing there is I was I was I was in the saddle and out of the saddle, but I was putting in my big digs when I was really putting in digs, trying to get rid of that guy that was riding my wheel. I was out of the saddle, putting down putting down some pretty big attacks, and um, in that case again where I felt like where I knew I was the strongest guy in that race. I was riding out of the saddle a lot, and what I did in that final mile, once I finally was able to kind of get rid of him off my wheel, I got out of the saddle, kind of just settled right into that to about 300 watts. I knew, hey, I'm climbing at 300. I have a lead. I've got a 25, 30 second lead. I'm out of the saddle, climbing at 300 watts. There's no way this guy's passing me. I'm, when, when I'm riding 300 watts, he'd have to literally climb at like seven plus watts per kilo to catch me. Not happening. So, um, so that's my new updated stance, guys. Um, I think spinning to win is still important, and I'm st I still use it in my in my uh, racing. I still train it. I still use it at very pivotal moments on climbs and races or in group rides where I'm really being pushed to my limits, but. I also find that there's some big value in being able to get out of the saddle and climb a bigger and climb with a lower cadence, pushing a bigger gear. And at the, again, at the end of the day, I just find I just find it to be quicker. I just find that I can climb faster. Like when I was on Whiteface, I was actually a couple of times on the more than a few, several times on that climb up Whiteface. I was trying to, I was experimenting to see if I, if I could be faster in the saddle spinning. So like when I was out of the saddle, climbing at like 68 cadence, like 310 to 320 watts, I would, I would intentionally go to a couple easier gears and try spinning at the same power. And what I was finding is that I, my, my speed, my, my speed on my Garmin was actually going down. Like even though I was kind of riding the same power, because I was in easier gears, I was, I honestly, I was, I was going, it seemed like I was going slower. My average speed, or my, my speed at that current time was actually getting slower. So I was like, hey, I'm not going to sit here and spin if I can ride faster out of the saddle. So I would literally, I'd click down a few more gears, get out of the saddle, go back to that, you know, upper 60s, low 70 cadence, at the, or again, at, at around that same power, that 300 to 320 range. And my speed was simply going faster. Like if I was in the saddle spinning, I'd be going like, say I was going 10 miles an hour. If I got out of the saddle, lowered cadence, got into a bigger gear, I'd be going 10.4 miles an hour. So I was just simply going faster out of the saddle um, at lowered cadences. And that's, you know, I can't lie, guys, that's what I've been finding is that and I think it's good that you have a good spectrum so that when you're on that climb, you're setting pace. You're out of the saddle climbing. You're you're going efficiently, and you got a guy come up on you and 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 go by you. Now he's setting a higher pace. What I would do there, what I've been doing there, is I've been basically sitting down in the saddle, 
clicking into easy easier gears and really snapping out a quick you know four or five hundred watt surge in the saddle high cadence to get onto that faster wheel and and just try to hold and just do my best to try to hold it i find that in that scenario when it comes to trying to hold a faster wheel in front of you i think it's i think it, for me anyways i have an i have a more efficient time doing it in the saddle at high cadence if i'm in a situation where i feel comfortable or i'm the guy set in pace or i'm kind of on my own individual time trial kind of thing or my own individual effort kind of thing i think it's more efficient for me to be out of the saddle climbing I just think it's a little faster. So that's my new, you know, July 2017 stance on it. Um, I still find significant value in the spin-to-win approach. But I won't lie, I think there's also some some huge value to being able to push bigger gears. Um, and, it's, and for me, out of the saddle is the way I, I'm more efficient doing that. So just wanted to make this video for you guys. I'm looking here. I'm over like 21 minutes now for the video. So I'm going to cut it off here. Um, leave me some comments down below, guys. Let me know what you think of this video. Do you like it? Do you not like it? What do you think? Are you more efficient in the saddle spinning? Are you more efficient grinding a bigger cadence, bigger gear? What do you guys think? This is my personal, uh, this is my, this is my thoughts after you know another you know year of riding i'd have to say that this is my new updated stance i think it's best to have a good spectrum where you can do both um as always guys i appreciate all the support in the channel and i look forward to seeing you guys right back here in my next video